One of the exciting things about uh, being a writer is being able to find and pursue things that interest you. Um, and I like to say, uh, 20 years ago, the FBI gave me access to its crime lab. And at that point, nobody had any idea what forensic science was. And I spent six months in the crime lab and did a book, and it helped uh, foster the explosion of interest in forensic science. And when I was there, I felt, <coughs> as a writer, like I had discovered a gold mine that no one else had ever seen before. Um, and I loved it. And uh, until I was brought into the world of the U.S. Marshal Service, I hadn't had that feeling again. Um, the U.S. Marshal Service, most people believe, is this wonderful, traditional, old-fashioned, uh, archaic law enforcement agency that they're not quite sure exactly what it does today. They think it may have something to do with the witness protection program. And, and I was one of those people. Um, and then I began finding out what the Marshal Service does and, and how well they, they do it. And uh, in uh, 2012, for example, uh, the 3,500 officers, deputies of the Marshal Service with the extended task forces tracked down and arrested 123,000 fugitives. That's 123,000 in one year. Uh, but not just people with who have com made a mistake. These are people who average four felony convictions each, and more than half of them were violent offenders, murder, rape, aggravated assault. These are the people who commit the crimes every day. So there's no way of knowing when you take 123,000 people who commit crimes to survive off the street, how that impacts all of us when we walk down the street. Um, and the more I got into the Marshal Service, the more excited I got uh, about learning about the things that they do. Um, and Mike and Lenny are going to tell you some of them. Um, but to do this book, I was uh, able to speak to a lot of the people that both of these men have worked with, and men who have worked for both of these guys. Um, and they told me their stories, a lot of them. And that's what this book is about. It is at times funny, at times poignant. Um, these are the guys who stand in front of a lot of doors every day, not knowing what's on the other side. These are the guys who get shot at more than any other law enforcement uh, agents uh, in, in this country. Uh, if there is a major case going on in this country, uh, the Marshal Service will be involved, even though they won't get any publicity. Uh, recently, the head of a major uh, Mexican drug cartel was arrested. It was the Marshal Service that put him in the hotel room in Mexico City. Uh, Whitey Bulger, uh, who is that career criminal everybody knows about, that the FBI uh, has gotten a tremendous amount of publicity uh, for, for finding and locating. The FBI spent 15 years failing to locate him until the Marshal Service <coughs> came in uh, and within a year they put him in an apartment and the FBI, they then said to the FBI, you can arrest him. And the FBI did and took credit for it. Um, the DC snipers, it was the Marshal Service who put names on the snipers and then gave, the, gave law enforcement the license plate of the car that they were driving in which they were arrested. Uh, I can go on and on and on because when I get enthusiastic about a subject, I will ramble forever. Um, but of the three of us, I am by far the least interesting. <clears throat> I'm going to introduce <clears throat> my friend Lenny DePaul and Lenny will introduce Mike Herb. Lenny uh, <coughs> um, has a distinguished career 
in law enforcement. He uh, was a in the Navy Special Ops, um, went from there to the Secret Service, where he worked in the Reagan White House. Um, a friend of his said, you know, there's this really cool organization nobody knows about called the Marshal Service. And if you like action, that's the place to be. Uh, Lenny transferred into the Marshal Service and eventually uh, came to head uh, their largest and most effective task force, the New York, New Jersey Violent Felons Task Force, um, which consisted of uh, uh, officers from 53 different contributing agencies, all of whom raised their right hand and became U.S. deputies, which gave them federal arrest authority. Lenny also... Uh, it was Lenny's group, and Lenny was the lead in the TV show Manhunters uh, that many of, you, many of you may have seen. Um, and I'm just, uh, one of the joys of doing what I do is meeting people like these two. Uh, and so my friend Lenny DePaul. Well, thank you, David, and it and, uh, was a very kind introduction, and I very much <laughs> appreciate that. I got to meet this guy, Lenny. Uh, <laughs> Thank you all for coming and sharing uh, in this great night, which I feel is going to be a the launch of a, of a fabulous book. Uh, I have the honor and privilege of uh, writing the forward in the book, and uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. But I, I wanted to publicly thank um, and congratulate, uh, of course, our writer and author, David Fisher, and uh, our uh, former Associate Director of Operations, Mike Earp, uh, who certainly need a round of applause for what they've done to get this book out there. So. Thank you very much. Great job. The uh, stories uh, that are in the book are uh, extraordinary work that goes on every day in the Marshal Service. Um, the investigators, and David touched a little bit about the task force that I ran. Uh, we were stood up in May of 2002, uh, congressionally funded uh, for on, a, on a mandate that Mr. Earp was uh, very instrumental in, in, uh, in uh, spearheading and getting this thing off the ground. Uh, back in 02 after 9-11 uh, with the FBI concentrating on uh, domestic terrorism uh, somebody needed to look in our own backyards so uh, we started very small three offices one in Jersey one in Long Island one in Manhattan we had about 30 investigators from a few different agencies and when I retired six months ago uh, we were at 380 full-time investigators from over 90 different federal state and local agencies uh, we operated out of 13 offices. Uh, we were headquartered in Manhattan. And just my task force alone, not mentioning the entire country, David threw a couple of numbers out there, 120 some odd thousand arrests. Uh, we were averaging about 120 arrests a week just in this region alone. And that's violent predators, murderers, rapists, terrorists, arsonists, gun runners, drug runners, the worst of the worst. So a few years back when most of you were watching Snooky and Jersey Shore, um, you're laughing, is that? No. The, uh, we also did a, a reality show. We shot 60 episodes of Manhunters, as, as David said. And, and uh, my boss at the time, Mike, had called me and said, this is a great idea. Uh, we're federally funded. Why not show the great work that the men and women do uh, every day, uh, weekends, holidays? Um, it's a perfect example of, of positive press that we, we need. I mean, in law enforcement, unfortunately, we're... we're uh, up against it with cameras rolling out there and, and whatnot. So positive press was good. So we did, and, and we, what we set out to do, we accomplished. It was a successful show, uh, three seasons, and uh, I thank Mike for that. He was uh, backing me in Washington 100% uh, with everything, so it worked out well. And this book, too, uh, is something that will, um, it shows with the 50 to 60 interviews that David did in the the year long or over a year of interviews that were done around the country and, and whatnot, but it, it certainly is going to show and give you an idea what kind of work that these uh, men and women do every day. I mean, they're downrange going after people with four to six prior arrests that don't want to go back to jail. And um, you know, I could sit up here and tell a lot of stories. I don't want to bore you to death. Uh, but with that, again, thank you for coming out. It's my privilege and honor uh, to introduce to you. Uh, the former uh, Associate Director of Operations in Mike's book. He's the guest of honor and the, the man of the hour, Mike Earp. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Lenny. I was your boss for a long time, and that's by far the